Hi guys. It's probably about quarter to six now in the evening. It's come over rather overcast. It wasn't. It's been pretty nice all day, but it's come over overcast. I know the weather has forecast thunderstorms for tomorrow morning in this area. It's supposed to start in the west and move across to the east and uh, it's supposed to hit my region sort of tomorrow morning. <clears throat> but anyway, it's been a while since I've done a vlog because one, well, because of the heat wave, I haven't felt like doing anything apart from just sit and chill. Um, plus, I got a letter from the DWP, Department for Wankers and Pricks, I mean Work and Pensions. <laughs> wankers and Pricks actually fits them better, but I suppose they can only do what the government tells them to do, you know, the government makes the rules after all. But still, they decided to terminate my ESA claim, my Employment and Support Allowance. Which I get for my uh, Asperger's syndrome. Um, which stressed me out to no end. I really shouldn't have gotten stressed, but things like that for some reason really do get me stressed. And of course, I get stressed, I then get depressed. So that's another reason I didn't make videos, because I wasn't really in the right frame of mind. But uh, anyway, that's all sorted. I got, we phoned them Monday, and they said we'd give you, you know, three hour call back, no call back. So mum rang them again yesterday morning, and they rung back within a couple of hours. And then she rung back again, because she, what, um, well, she rung back had to email a colleague to get more information on why my claim was terminated. Um, then she called back later that day saying, you know, still haven't heard anything, but, you know, it could, they will call back and it could be like today, which, well, would have been tomorrow or next week. I was like, well, okay, we can't do much more than that, so... <clears throat> and typically yesterday I was sitting on the bloody throne when they rang. So I'm sort of walking like this through the flat with my trousers around my ankles trying to get the phone. <laughs> or my shorts, I should say, because I'm not wearing trousers at the minute. Or should I say pants? Pants. I actually prefer to call them pants than trousers. I don't like the term trousers. Anyway. But they called back today saying that they've reinstated my claim. So I haven't got to piss around making a new claim. Because they realised it was closed due to their own error. <laughs> so, yeah. All sorts, so I don't have to worry about that. In theory, I should get paid as per normal after 12.30 tonight. If not, I'll be on the phone again saying, Oi, you reinstated my claim. I'm due a payment. Pay me. Because <laughs> it, it may have messed up on the system. I've had things like that before. I've actually had it where around sort of like when the tax year ends, sometimes you don't get paid because the computers haven't readjusted and they don't send the payment out. But usually when that happens, quick phone call and they just, you know, set it going. Within a couple of hours, you have your money in your account. <clears throat> Anyway, don't ask, I don't know what I'm doing. I've actually been tinkering with this because I've taken my old Apple iMac apart. Because it was doing my head in and I needed to relieve some stress. I tried to sell it on Gumtree and whatnot. No one was interested, even went on eBay at one point. No interest whatsoever. Apart from a few uh, time wasters, and uh, so I'll take it. No. Excuse me, take it apart. So I've got the hard drive here. Now, before when I turned it on, we would just get a disc with a question mark come up on screen. But when now I've put the um, hard drive from the iMac in, it does this.
This is something it never did before I put the um, hard drive from the iMac in. There we go. Eject. And that should come up with a floppy disk icon with a question mark. There we go. So I'm wondering, I'm not an Apple expert. This is one reason I want to keep this machine, because I wanted to learn. But I actually have to say, after taking the iMac apart and looking at this one, they're, they're really well-built computers. You can't deny it. So I'm not surprised they actually cost a lot more than like a Windows machine, because these are actually pretty robust. It's like an armoured tank, this thing. Anyway, if anyone does know what I'm supposed to do, should I find an iOS that would have been installed on this and put it to a disk and put the disk in here and see what happens, or... Help. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I've got a gigabyte of RAM on it. I did wonder where my other 512 megabyte sticks had disappeared to. But yeah, would not mind getting this up and running. Oh shit, bent me earlobe. <sighs> Pick this up Sunday. Another British Telecom cone. A rare one round here. I've never seen this one. I am. Um, collector friend of mine has got one and actually another guy I'm talking to here I won't give out his real name but he's also got a couple one, two, one, two, I can't remember <clears throat> um, they, live in different, they live in different parts of the UK but I've never seen this one round here so I was quite pleased to pick that one up it was in some weeds all I could see was a little red top but mum stopped on the way back from her Sunday. Because she's a wonderful mum, she'll do things like that for me. She don't care. But, be warned. If the cops do see you and they want to be assholes, they can do you for theft by finding. So, I've never been done for it. Didn't know that exist till I was... Till me and a friend were talking to um, a couple of wanker PCSOs around here. They'd stopped us. We were taken... If you don't, I, I wish I had this camera back then, but my friend didn't like it. No one likes being filmed. I don't know why. But, uh, you picture it. This huge bike trailer was actually the length of a single bed. Like this. Because that's what he made his um, trailers out of for his bicycle. Just an old bed frame. Full, you know of scrap like so high in fact once we had three quarters of a ton of scrap I'm not kidding the guy in the Weybridge office actually thought his scales were broken <laughs> no wonder that was such a chore to get that down there but anyway they stopped us and they wanted us to um well they said if they caught us taking scrap like that again we should have had or should have a um, waste carriers license but uh I did a bit of research on that and no you don't, not if you're going from your own home and getting rid of your own waste, you don't need a waste carrier's license, which is exactly what we were doing, you know, we weren't going around gathering scrap, this is just shit he'd accumulated over a period of time in his yard and we were getting rid of it, or in his garden I should say, we were getting rid of it. And that's what this particular PCSO was like. I don't think he still does it because I haven't seen him for ages. Good. Because he was a complete tosser, but never mind. But uh, that was uh, him that said you can get done for theft by finding if you pick things up off the side of the road and whatnot. Anywho, this bike, it's assembled, it's complete, and two-thirds of it work as in the brakes work the rear gears work front gears being a pain in my rear end um, it'll shift via the gear lever into second fine but won't go into third at the front but if I disconnect the gear cable from the mechanism here 
and just push the mechanism with my hand, it'll go into third gear fine. So I've either got an issue with the cable or the shifter, and I'm hoping it's not the shifter because that's going to be an arse ache. Because the shifter is actually part of the brake lever as well. It's all one assembly. Which means I would have to disconnect all the brakes as well and the same that side and swap them all out for something else. So yeah, it'll be a complete ball ache to do, but it'll be well. I'm changing that seat as well. That don't look right on there, does it? That really doesn't look right. It's the only one I've got at the minute as well, I think. I have to go digging around in my closet up here. Uh, I'm in a bit of a shift around with some lights. I've got the Mark II tilled on, hanging next to the Mark I. And I was asked earlier, did I ever see them on the roads? Yes, I did. I must have been about 11, 10, 11, 12 years old, something like that. No, I was about 10 years old, 9, 10 years old. Um, the electricity company around here was Eastern Electricity, and they used those. So, they were one of the first lamps I actually saw. But I think the actual first one I remember seeing was actually a paraffin one, the yellow doorman paraffin one, which I wouldn't mind getting my hands on at some point. But other than that, I've seen other lamps used over the years around here, like... This one, the Permic, these mono lamps, I've seen some of them used. These ones I do still use, still use C sometimes. That's really good grammar. I'll try again. These uni lamps I do still see used at times. Uh, these Nissan mono lights, these ones. They're for the motorways, so I don't see those up here. These ones I do see used from time to time. I used to see these used quite a lot, sort of the late 90s era. Never seen the maxi lights. The only time I saw one of these JSP Plasti flashes in use was down in London on a school trip. Did see in the 90s a bunch of sort of mid to late 90s. I saw a bunch of these uh, doorman traffic lamp E's used. Did see at least one of these used, the traffic light 360. Never saw any of these ones used, the traffic lamps, but I have seen the traffic lights used. I think that's it. Yeah, it is. That's what I say to the phone. <laughs> oh, I'm going to let it ring. I'm in here so it's not going to be too loud for you guys. Probably a debt collector anyway from Cabot Bloody Financial or whoever the fuck they are. <clears throat> they keep ringing me. And because I was waiting for the... Let me just listen to the answer phone. Yeah, Cabot Financial, I thought it was. <laughs> I think I've got a letter from them in the bathroom. I'm going to have to email them, I think. But yeah, I was waiting for the phone call from um, ESA. And they rang and they're like, is Andrew there? Yes. It's so-and-so from Cabot Financial. Beep. <laughs> That's exactly like I I can't deal with things like that. I know I shouldn't, but... Bollocks to him. That's what I say, Nemo. Bollocks to him. Getting a bit warm now. I'll have to go and sit back in front of the fan. Oh, I spent all of last Friday fixing inner tubes. I fixed four in total because I had to do the two on the bike my brother's now got. I took it over um, Sunday. Forgot the bike lock so he couldn't actually use it today. So mum had to pick him up and take him in, I suppose. So I'll have to remember to give them a bike lock. But yeah, one of the tubes on this one is actually 
got three patches on it. It had three holes. But I, well, I didn't have the money anyway and I wasn't going to spend... I can't remember if they're 5 99 or 6 99 now, but... Something like that, about 14 quid at roughly per bike in inner tubes. And when I've got a perfectly good puncture repair kit there. And thankfully, none of the patches failed. Because I've got a bit of a cheat. You're supposed to put your glue on, let it go sticky, so you leave it for about a minute or two, just let it go sticky. Put your patch on, and then I get something heavy. In my case, the motorcycle battery I've got up here. And sat that on it, so it's pressing against it, and then just put that on a... Well, obviously not a sharp surface, and just let it sit like that for 10-20 minutes to set. That's, my, that's how I've always fixed patches. Or punctures, I should say, not patches. <sighs> oh, I'm a sticky back. <laughs> Anywho, I'm going to leave this video here, I think. Nemo wants his dish topped up. Speaking of Nemo, doing what I did yesterday, I couldn't believe it. I thought I'd fed him, and he was running around meowing, wanting food, and I'm like, I've already fed you. And I come in here, right, and I found his food dish up here. I'd only gone and put the tin of food in there, because I emptied what was in his dish out, because it had fly eggs on. What was left in there, there's a few chunks of meat in there. Put it on there to fill it with cat food again. But for some reason, when I got the tin out of the cupboard up there, I just went straight down and tipped it straight into his water dish. I couldn't believe it. I thought, what a tool. If I get hungry later, I've got some jacket spuds there. Anywho, his dish is empty, so I'll top that up for him and get myself a drink as well. Getting a bit sweaty betty. Though why this is actually a t-shirt I was wearing Sunday, I have no idea why I put it on today. I've got so many red t-shirts, I must have got confused. Because I know I was wearing a red t-shirt yesterday, I just can't remember which one. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching, and I will talk to you all again soon. Bye!